Hi, welcome back to Coding Money. In about two hours, we'll work on top 10 JavaScript algorithms for beginners that will help you prepare for lead code problems. These coding problems are for absolute beginners, and these are meant to help you get better at coding and at the same time, uh, prepare you for your coding interview at big tech companies like Google, where the starting salary is $191,000. I have a bonus for you at the end of the video. Make sure you don't miss that. So, let's get started. We'll be reversing a string and also an integer. This is a very common coding interview question. One way or the other, you'll be required to reverse a string or integer as part of your coding interview challenge. So let's get started. All right, so we got two coding challenges in this video. We need to reverse a string and then later we'll reverse an integer. We'll do the uh, string first because once you know how to reverse a string, you can easily reverse an integer. All you would have to do is convert the uh, integer into the string, do the reversal, and then convert back to the integer. You'll have uh, the solution. Uh, so we're given a string. We need to return a new string with the reverse order of the characters. Here are some of the examples. Uh, pause the video right here and give it a try. All right, thank you for trying to solve this problem. If you were not able to come up with a solution, uh, no worries at all. I'll give you one possible solution to this problem. I'll start off by creating a variable called reversed. I'll set it to empty strings. I'll do something with this uh, variable and then uh, return it at the end. So what do you think I should be doing to this variable in order to uh, reverse a string like coding money? Um, so obviously uh, you would have to loop through each character of the string one by one and add each character to this reversed um, variable, but the next characters that you would insert you would insert before that so we will be doing something like this one by one to each character as you can see we'll have something like this at the end so to do that we need a loop and I'm sure you're all familiar with the for loop so we'll do let i equals to zero I less than str dot length i plus plus and all we have to do is set reversed equal to str dot i the current character plus add to the previous ones reversed first and at the end we're just gonna re uh, return the reverse let me run the code to see if it works so here I'm gonna call the function coding money as you can see it has reversed the string for us so this is a solution but as you can see for this uh, traditional for loop there are many moving pieces like you need to set a variable here you know you need to check for the condition and you need to set the incrementer here so there's uh, there are many areas that things can go wrong so my suggestion would be to use the uh, newer uh, JavaScript syntax you can do the same thing as let car of str and all you have to do replace this with the car and if i save it and i try to run this again you see it does the same thing but this is much cleaner there's even an easier way uh, to solve this problem the reason i gave you the solution uh, because sometimes the interviewer might uh, prevent you from using that built-in function People who have used JavaScript for some time, they already know that there's a built-in reverse function. Why not use that? Sometimes the interviewer might not allow you to use that. So I gave you the solution in case that happens to you. So let me 
copy this solution. Uh, let me copy the whole function and save it here for your future reference. Uh, by the way, I've created a GitHub repository where I'll be posting a lot more coding um, challenges. Um, I'll post the link in the description, so be sure to check that out and follow it because I'll be posting lead code problems and a lot of other coding interview challenges. Uh, let me show you the MDN documentation for the built-in reverse method. As you can see, uh, this method is uh, used on arrays. We can only use this on arrays. Um, however, we are working with strings now. So we need to find a way to convert the string into an array uh, to do the reversal and then convert back the array into a string. So let's do that. Okay, let's create a variable called uh, uh, str to array. So the way we convert the string to an array is by using a method called split. Uh, so if we don't pass anything, it's going to uh, split each character in the string into uh, an element in an array. So once uh, we have that, we can just call the reverse method on str str to array. We can call the reverse function. This will reverse uh, the array, but we need uh, to return uh, a string. So for that case, str to array, we need to join it. How do we join it? The same way that we use the split. We just join back the elements in the array into a string. So if I run this, as you can see, we'll get the same output. We can even minimize uh, this syntax this code we can write all of this in one line uh, because of something called chaining in javascript so we can change chain the whole thing in one line so how can we do that so let me remove all of it and return so so i'll get the input string i'll call split onto it to convert it into an array then I can call reverse and then I can join it back. And this is the reverse string. And if I save it, run it, we get the same output. So with this new knowledge that you have of uh, string reversals, you can easily reverse integers. Uh, so this should be very easy. I highly recommend you pause the video right here and give it a try. Thank you for trying to solve this problem. I hope you were able to find a solution. I'm sure uh, if you did try this uh, problem, you came across the edge case where you have a negative number as the input and you would have to return an, an, a negative uh, reversed uh, number. So we're gonna take care of that now. There are many ways to solving this problem. I'm gonna give you one possible solution. So I'm gonna create a variable called reversed. So um, you already know how to convert a string. Uh, so we need to convert the integer into a string. And to do that, we can use in.toString method. And then mm, pretty much do the same thing we did for the string, uh, split it into uh, an array. Uh, now run the reverse on the array. Why we're uh, converting it into array because the reverse method only works on the arrays and then we will join it back. Join. If I return this and I let me run this function. Um, 15. As you can see, we're re reversing it and we are returning a string. This is not an integer. We need to return an integer and also we need to, uh, for example, if I run it with uh, negative uh, 15, 
uh, you will see that the sign will come after the number uh, this is not correct so we need to uh, first of all convert uh, the string into an integer and the way we're gonna do that is by using parse int okay and and then we need to multiply this with uh, a, a positive one if uh, if it is uh, a positive number and if it is a negative number we need to convert this into uh, for example a negative one so uh, we already have a function for that it's math.sign and we need to provide the input string n so whatever the sign for this uh, input is we're gonna use that over here uh, so I'm going to pass the input string over here and now if I run the code you should get uh, the correct uh, negative uh, integer in the reversed order we're given a string we need to return true if the string is a palindrome or false if it is not pa what is a palindrome palindromes are strings that form the same word if it is reversed for example kayak if you reverse the, this word you'll get the same word so uh, we need to return true in that case similarly uh, madam if you reverse it you'll get the same thing however for coding money if you reverse it you'll get something like this and this is not equal to this therefore we need to return false so uh, we already know how to reverse a string uh, if you do not know how to do that you can watch the last video i uh, would like you uh, to solve this problem pause the video right here and then come back uh, we will work on one possible solution all right i hope you were able to find a solution for this problem if you didn't uh don't worry we'll uh, work on it right now uh, so first of all we need to uh, find the reverse of the given uh, input string so uh, we'll create a variable called reversed and uh, we'll reverse the uh, input string str um, um, we'll call the split function on it why because we need to convert it into an array why because we uh, need uh, to run reverse function on it and this uh, function only works on the arrays and once it's reversed we can join it uh, like that uh, turn it back into a string so now we have the reversed um, of the input string and we need to check for it now so if the input string is equal to reversed then we need to return uh, true um, otherwise if it fails then we need to return false at the end let's run this function to check uh, run the function to see if it works so i'm going to say palindrome uh, I'll run it with kayak first uh, let me save it and then I'll run yeah so uh, it's working fine I'm getting the desired result which is true let me try with uh, coding money we should get false in this case as you can see uh, this is working fine and it's a very easy uh, problem um, and the videos that the future videos will build upon the knowledge from the previous videos so expect that the next videos to get uh, more difficult so we can um, we can write all of this in one line we can do the comparison right here we can get rid of this and do the comparison right here like this and this will still work let me run it see it's working fine 
uh, I'm, I'm going to give you an assignment, a <laughs> homework. Uh, you can come up with a solution. Um, there's another technique called the two pointers technique. If you want to learn about that, do some research, uh, find out what it does and try to solve this problem with the two pointer technique. Or there's another uh, JavaScript built in method called every, you can use that to solve this. Uh, so when you do it, just paste your result in the comment section and you'll get a thumbs up from me. Today we're going to work on a very common uh, coding interview question. Uh, given a string, return the character that is most commonly used in the string. Uh, example, uh, if you're given a, a string like A, B, C, 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 D, then we'll return the character C because C is the most commonly used character in this string. And as you can see in this uh, second example, you see one is repeated the most in this string. Therefore, we'll return the character one, uh, not the number one. So um, once you um, learn how to solve this problem using the technique that I'm going to give you in this video, you'll be able to solve a variety of other common string questions. Uh, for example, what is the most common characters in a string? Does a string A have the same characters as string B? Anagram questions. Does the given string have any repeated characters in it? These are some examples of the uh, problems that you would be able to solve uh, by using the method that I'm going to teach you in this video. But first, I would like you to give this problem a try. I'll be right here. Pause the video. All right, welcome back. I hope you were able to find a solution. Um, if not, uh, doesn't matter. We'll work on it right now. Um, just by looking at this problem, um, we uh, know that we need some kind of a data structure to keep uh, the count of uh, each character in a given string. So we would need a, a character map. Uh, let me give you an example, something like this a1, um, b1, and c, not sure how many, like about seven, and d1. Just um, something like this. We need something uh, like this. Okay, so to come up uh, with something like this, we already have a data structure in JavaScript called, um, you know, object, data, uh, JavaScript objects, uh, or like this, um, we can also use another data structure called maps, which is uh, something new, uh, but um, we'll use an object um, in this um, case. So, um, but how to uh, do this? How, how can we, uh, of course, we would have to loop over through each character, like one by one in a given string and try to count it and then store the values in this object. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, of course, we would need an object. So we'll create an object called character map, car map, and we'll set it to an empty object. Okay, and now we need to loop over the string. We, we need to loop over uh, each uh, character in a string and um, and add the value to the character map. Uh, so to loop over a string or uh, an array, we use we can use the same syntax um, for for uh, let car of str uh, str is the input. So. We need to say uh, we need to see if there's already a value in the character map. If there is, then we need to increment the value. If, uh, for example, if there's no entry for a, we need to create an, a new entry for a and set it to equal one. I mean, the first time we set the value, we will set it to one, and then. Um, uh, if we come across the same character, we need to increment the value. So to do that, we ch will check the character map for that value. Mm -hmm. 
if there's the if we have the character uh, in the character map, then we will uh, we'll increment it by one. If we don't have it, then we'll we'll set the value as one. Okay, like for example, how how would this uh, how this loop would work? Um, it's very easy. So we're gonna loop over each string, and so so for example, when we are at a. We'll see that if there is uh, a in the character map, no, there is not. So we'll set a equal to one. All right. Then uh, uh, it goes to b. Uh, do we have b in the character map? No, we don't have it. So we'll set b equal to one. So the else part will run. Uh, so when it comes to c, do we have c in the character map? No, so we'll set it to one, and then again it will come to C. Do we have C in the character map? Yes, we have. So increment by one, so it will become two, and it, it will again come to C. C. Do we have C? Yes, we have. So we will increment by one, so it will be three. It will keep on doing this. And un unless until we have the character map with uh, um, with the count of each character in in our input string, so we will have that right. Just um, to be sure, let me return it uh, to say that our character map is working. So let me save this. Um, let me run this. Okay, we need to call the function. So let me call this one. I need to save it and run it. As you can see, we have created uh, our character map with the count of each character um, in the input string. So we have something like this as I was showing you in the example before. Now, this, uh, this is object, right? We need to loop through uh, the object uh, to find um, which one uh, is uh, the most commonly used uh, character in the string. So I'll, I'll show you two ways of uh, looping the objects. One way is, uh, old uh, way of uh, looping through an object um, and I'll give you a newer way of looping through an object which is much easier um, so let me uh, first of all give you um, uh, the older syntax and the way that we loop through the object is by converting it into an, an array and how we can convert an object into an array is by using something called object dot entries and passing uh, the object. In our case, it is character map. So to loop over, then we 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 have uh, it will return an array with the keys and value, just like in our character map. These are the keys. And these are the values that we created earlier. So um, we need to use a for loop to loop through this array now. So for that, we say for const uh, destructure it. So I'll destructure and get the key and value from this array. So of object.entries like this. And then 
yeah, so this is how we're going to loop through, uh, a, you know, a, an object by convert converting it into a character. Let me show you how, how it looks like. So let me con uh, uh, let me console log this. So we get we get key and value. So let me save this and run it. See? So we get the key and the value. This is uh, this is the output from this loop, as you can see. So we get the keys and values. Okay. All right. So now, what do we need to do? We need to find which one is the maximum. Like we need to find, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, give an instruction to the computer to find. Uh, see, like the the we can see, like we are humans, we can see that this one is the most commonly used character, but we need to tell the computer to find this one. So to do that, we need to um, check each one. We need to check each one of these to see which one is the maximum. And to keep account for that one, we need to create another variable called max and uh, set it to zero. And also to get the character, uh, the max character, we'll, we'll, we'll need to create another um, variable and set this to uh, an empty string. So now, now we'll just uh, check for a condition. Like we'll see, uh, we'll say if, if value, oops, if v value is greater than max, so we'll see like the first one, if is this greater than max, which is zero? Yes, then we'll set this max to the value. And, um, and max jar to the key, right? So this will loop, uh, loop through each one. Like this will, uh, first of all, it, it goes, takes a see is this greater than uh, zero yes then it mm, updates the value for max and max char to a it comes to b uh, is this greater than uh, one because it's been changed to one yes it is uh, no it is not then it skips that it comes to c it see it sees that whether the value which is um, seven greater than one. Yes. Then set the value to seven, max to seven, and uh, set max char to the key, which is uh, what C, and return what we need to return the max char. Let me save this and run it. All right, so we are getting the correct output from uh, our code. This is a working code, but now we're going to try to uh, optimize it a bit. And uh, I'll show you, I said I, I'll show you a newer way, uh, an easier way to loop through the objects. All right, so we can use uh, a similar syntax that we used to loop through the string. We can use this uh, syntax to loop through arrays as well. Uh, so we can use something like this for the objects as well. So how uh, can we do that? There's just a small little change. So we can say let let key of um, car map. As you can see, this is exactly the same syntax, but we can't use uh, let key of uh, uh, object, uh, which is a car map, we cannot use that. For the objects, the change that we need to bring is we need to change off with n. Uh, so this is a bit uh, opposite of each other. So when you want to loop through the arrays and strings, you will um, uh, write off 
um, and O starts like object starts with O, so that's not what you're gonna use for uh, objects. You will use N uh, for the objects. So now um, here uh, to check the value, we need to say jar map key. Okay, for the value, this is how we're going to write it. And so for the key, we just write key over here. Uh, let me save the code, run it again. Okay, we are having a problem here. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's case sensitive, so we need to be careful with naming um, with um, the, our code. So let's run it again. See, we're getting the same output, but this one is much nicer, cleaner code. And um, you know, you need, you just need to remember very few things to, um, you know, be able to loop through the objects. Uh, however, the earlier example had like you need to do remember object dot entries, and then you need to remember to pass the object into that um, method. So this one is much easier. This is my personal opinion. Also, we can refactor this code to make it much uh, smaller. Um, so we can uh, convert the same code in just one line of code. So here we can say if character map, okay? And if there is a character map, then we will add a one to it, or if it does not exist, then we'll, what we will do is, we'll just, uh, uh, you know, use one. So let's see. Okay, let me save it. And run the code. As you can see, this looks much, uh, uh, you know, cleaner and short. As you can see, we just convert the if else, uh, uh, you know, statement into one line of code. Uh, you can do this like even uh, if it is too much to do like plus one, you can do something like plus plus character map or one. So if you save it, and you see our code is working fine. Let's run the other test case. We should get one. Yes, it's working just fine. We are given an array and a chunk size. Divide the array into many subarrays where each subarray is of length size. For example, if you're given an array with elements of 1, 2, 3, 4, then we need to divide this array into chunks of length 2. For example, the output should be an array containing subarrays of length 2. Here are some other test cases and examples for better understanding of this problem. I would suggest you to pause the video here, give this problem a try. All right, thank you for trying to solve this problem. Uh, we're gonna work on one possible way of solving this uh, coding challenge. Um, the first thing uh, that I do when I get a coding problem is that uh, I use the divide and conquer technique where I get the problem and divide it into smaller problems. So the first problem that I'm uh, looking at is to be able to figure out how to get the first two elements from this array, how to get the chunk of an array, right? So let me run uh, the function uh, and run this first test case over here. 
So what I would like to do is to get the first two elements from this uh, array. And the way that we can do that uh, is by using a built-in array function called slice. Let me open up the MDN documentation. It says the slice method returns a shallow copy of a portion of an array into a new array object, selected from the start to the end, end not included, where start and end represent the index items in that array. The original array is not modified. So let's, uh, let's use this to get the first two elements. So the way that we can do that is array dot slice. The arrays are um, zero indexed, which means the first element is zero. Then it is one, two, and three, like this. So to be able to get uh, the first two, we'll provide the first index, which is zero. And then uh, the second index is two. So in this case, we, we have this two. So this is great. We can use the size here. So uh, let me return this and see what we get in the output. Yeah, so we get the first two elements from the array. So now, we solved the small problem that will come in handy in solving the bigger problem, right? So now we know that we need to return an array, right? So we would uh, need to create an empty um, array here. Uh, let, let's call it result. So, and at the end, we will return this result, okay? Um, we'll return this uh, result, but first we need to get the chunks from array and um, push it in this array, right? So, um, so how we can do that? We can do it like this: result dot push, and we can put. Uh, We can uh, push uh, this uh, chunk inside of this array, the empty array that we have created. However, this will only push uh, the first two elements. Let me save this. And if I run it, you will see we only get the first chunk. However, we are not getting these other two. So we need to repeat this. And we need to uh, a variable to keep track of the index. Right, so let's uh, use a variable called index and set it uh, to zero. So instead of the zero, we will use this variable, okay? And we need to repeat this code, this line of code uh, for all the elements of the array. As long as there are elements in the array, we need to keep on repeating this. So for that, we will use a loop. Uh, so when you want to repeat a statement or code, uh, that's when you would use loop. So I'll use a while loop while index is less than the array dot linked. As long as there are elements in our array, we want to keep on executing this line of code, right? But this will run forever. This will be an infinite loop because we're not doing anything to make this uh, stop, right? Um, and uh, this will keep on running forever. We will we need to increment the index. We need to increment the index. We need to make sure that when uh, the index is greater than 
the array dot length then it should uh, exit the loop so how can we do that we will increment the index with the size right and so this will start from zero to and the next time i would like to add uh, index with the size so that the next time it will get from two it will uh, start from two to uh, four right here but since in this example we don't have the uh, fifth element which is going to be index of four we don't have that so uh, it will um, not this uh, function will not take uh, the slice function will not take the end as we read in the documentation so in that case we will have three and four so let's save this and run the code as you can see now we're getting the correct output so let me try to run with this uh, example and see if it is going to work for this yeah so we're getting the correct uh, uh result and um that's the solution for this coding problem that's only one possible solution there are many ways of solving this problem if your solution is different than this then it's not a problem as long as you're getting the desired output we need to write a function that accepts a string the function should capitalize the first letter of each word in the string, then return the capitalized string. Here are some examples. I want you to open the 5-titlecase.js exercise file and uh, give this problem a try. Pause the video right here. Thank you for trying to solve this problem. Um, every time I get a coding uh, problem, uh, what I do is use the divide and conquer technique to divide the problem into very small uh, problems so that it is easier to find a solution. So here, the first thing that I think we need to figure out is uh, to change uh, the case for the string to make it an uppercase. So let me return um, str uh, to uppercase. This is the function that we will call on the string to change the case so now you can see it's all capital letters right uh, however we would need uh, only the first letter of each word to be a capital not the whole sentence right so um, what we need to do is to um, to uh, break this string to split this string into an array uh, with each word and how can we do that so let me say const let me create a variable uh, words and i will call a split function on the string and i'll provide a space so what i will do is i will um, split this string based on the spaces so this will uh, become like something like this now that we have all, all the words what we can do is create um, uh, create another variable called result right and set that into an empty array and we will capitalize each word and push it into this array and at the end we will just return this result okay and to do that we need to loop over uh, the words so we need to loop over the string right with uh, each word so uh, we can use a for loop for let word of words so now we have access to each word and we want to push that result dot push we want to push that word 
into this result array and so what do we want to do we want to get the first letter of the word and how can we do that like this so so for each word like the first time it uh, loops over you'll get this word so you'll get this word so the first letter that you can get it by you know like doing like this okay so this is the first word but we need the rest of this uh, characters uh, to be added to this word so how can we do that so we need to add that uh, uh, if you uh, watched the last video, you know how to use the slice function. So what we'll do is we'll uh, call a slice on the word and we'll start from the first position. All right. As you can see, as you know that uh, strings and arrays are zero index. So so this would be zero, one, two, three. So we got the first letter uh, however we want to add the rest of the le uh, letters so we'll start from the position one so it will take all of this and add it here right so once we um, capitalize each word you will go the loop will go through each word each word like this one by one and capitalize the first letter and add the rest of the uh, characters to the word and so we will have all the words in the array so let me save this and uh, run the code you will see that okay so it's not been capitalized because we haven't called the to uppercase uh, uppercase function on onto the first letter so Let's do that and run the code again. Now, as you can see, each word in this array is capitalized, uh, but this is inside of an array. So we need to join join uh, the elements in the array into the string based on the space, right? So I'll save this and run this again. This is the correct output. And this is how we capitalize the um, sentence. Um, and if you don't like creating a new array and adding it, uh, adding each word into that array and uh, returning the result, we can even uh, minimize all of this work by using um, a map method. Uh, so we can call it map on this words so uh, we can get rid of all of this we can call the map function and we'll get access to each word right and the same way we will get access to um, the word we'll get the first letter we'll change this to uppercase We'll add the rest of, uh, whoops, we call the word, uh, we'll call slice on, on the word and add the rest of the characters of the word. And then we'll join with the space and return the result. Uh, let's run it see this is another solution so you got two solutions for this problem we no longer need this variable so we can remove this check to see if two provided strings are anagrams of each other one string is an anagram of another if it uses the same characters in the same quantity only consider characters not spaces or punctuation 
consider capital letters to be the same as lowercase. Here are some examples. If you provided two strings, one coding money and the other money coding, it should return true because it uses the same characters and the quantity of each character is the same, therefore it returns true. Same is true for this other example. Rail safety and fairy tales are anagrams of each other because they use the same characters and the same quantity uh, of characters are uh, present in both of these uh, strings. We will not consider exclamation marks or um, special characters or spaces. Um, so uh, this is the challenge for today. Uh, pause the video and give this problem a try. Also, if you want to follow along, check out the GitHub repository at this URL. All right, so I'll give you two possible solutions to this coding problem. Um, the first solution consists of three steps. In the first step, we'll build a character map for string A. Then we'll build a character map for string B. And this, in the third step, we'll compare both of these character maps to see if they're equal to each other. Um, if they're not, we'll return false. So let's uh, start by building the character map for string A. To do that, we need an empty object. Let's create that. Well, let's call this car uh, map A and set that to an empty object. And also we need to remove uh, space in uh, punctuations, uh, exclamation marks and things like that. So I'll do uh, that now. String A dot to lower case and to remove the um, uh, the punctuations and spaces, we would uh, we'll use a regular expression. Make sure to use uh, backslash capital W. This will match. Um, all the uh, special characters, um, the space and uh, punctuations. Um, this is a, a character set. The brackets represent the character set and this capital D represent anything that is not a word, which is different than the small uh, W. If you use a small W, it will match all uh, the words that is in a character. Uh, it will not match the punctuations. So we'll use capital D to replace that. Okay, so uh, to show you, um, uh, let's return uh, this string A. Let me return it. Uh, save this to see the output of um, our cl clean uh, string. So as you can see, um, this is the string A. It has space and exclamation marks. Uh, but after this line of code, it removed the exclamation mark in spaces. And this is the output that we get all right so let's uh, create uh, now um, the character map so um, we'll use a for loop so for let car of uh, string a and uh, so we'll say car a map a dot car let's see car map a if this character already exists if it exists then increment it by one if or if the if it does not exist then i use one okay so this will create uh, the character map for string A. Let me return it to see the output of what we get here. So return car map A, save and run. So you see uh, we're getting the character map for string A. Uh, so as you can see, it's counting each characters. For example, we have one R, two A, one I, one L, so on. 
So we created the character map um, for string A. We need to do the same thing, uh, the same exactly same steps. Uh, there is a principle in uh, software development: uh, do not repeat yourself. So if I write the same code over here, it's repeating myself, writing the same code again and again. So um, at this point it is uh, a good idea to create an helper uh, method another function to uh, um, to create the character map so i'll call this new function function i'll call it character car map i'll call it car map um, and it will have a str and i'll just um, what i'll do i'll copy this code I'll paste it here, right? So return car map. Uh, so uh, let's do something. I remove these things so that uh, we can reuse it with anything. So I'm just going to uh, change this to str because this is the variable that we're using here, str, and then str, okay? Remove the a from here and so I'm going to save this uh, what I'm going to do is here for character map a I'm going to use car map and provide string a to this one string a and let me return this map a to, to make sure it's working fine so yeah, so this is working fine. And the, now the, the best part is that we can reuse this f to build the character map for string B. So uh, I can copy the, the statement and paste it right here. Uh, we'll, I'll rename the variable, call it B. And here I'm just going to change string A to string B because this is what we're using as the parameter. And now, so we, we have uh, the character map. Uh, we build the character map for both the uh, string A and string B. Now we need to compare uh, compare both of them. First of all, let's compare the length of uh, um, both the characters. Uh, so to do that, as you can see in an object, we have keys and values. As you can see, R is the key and uh, one is the value. A is the key two is the value right um, to um, get the keys to get all the keys we can use uh, object dot keys and we can provide uh, the string like that so let me return this return object dot keys so that you see what would be the output now so if i return this uh, object dot keys. Oh, sorry. I have to provide the char character map, uh, car map a. So let me save it. So, so you see, uh, these are the keys. It, it returns all the keys, uh, for me from the, uh, object, uh, the character map of, of string a. So what I can do is I can, uh, compare both of them by using an if statement. I can say object dot keys provide car map a uh, uh, and to find the length because this uh, object dot keys convert uh, into an array and then you get uh, the keys in an array so on the array we can use length to uh, to check the length and compare that with uh, object dot keys car map b uh, uh, dot length so if the length of these two um, um, keys do not match then we'll return false right so if our uh, character map a does not have the same uh, keys uh, as the character map b then obviously we know that this is uh, going to be false this is not going to be an anagram now we need to loop 
both of these character maps. So uh, we can loop over any of uh, them. We can either choose A or B, it doesn't matter. So I'll use uh, character map A. So I'll say let key uh, N uh, car map A. Uh, now you see that we're using N. You see, let key N. Uh, when we are working with objects and we want to loop through the objects, we use N. And if it is an array, then in that case, we'll use off. So now we're using let key N character map A. And then I'll use comparison. I'll do if um, car map A key is not equal to car map A b key if the key in character map a is not equal to the key of the character map b uh, for example if we have for example one r in character map a and we have two r in the character map a, b and if they are not equal to each other then in, in that case we know that this is not an anagram therefore we will return false right so if this check passes and this check passes and we can't find anything that is not equal to each other then it, and it means that it is an anagram and both of the uh, characters and character map a and b are equal uh, so this uh, means that we have an anagram so in that case uh, we will return true so Let's save this and let's run the code to see if it is working or not. As you can see, this is not working. Uh, why? This should return true. Um, why it is not working. So it is returning false. We have to find what is the reason. So oh here this is a big mistake that i'm doing i am checking the, if they're equal i should check if they're not equal so this should be like this they should not be equal to this and in that case we would return false uh, all right so let's uh save this and run the code it should give you the, the correct output this time let's um, try with another example so let me try with this. All right, let me save it. This should return true. The last test case, let's try with this one. Copy. paste save it okay and now it should return false this is uh, working this is the first solution to the problem let's work on the uh, the easier and, and very intuitive uh, solution to this problem all right let's work on the second solution I said I'll give you two solutions and the second solution is uh, uh, is much easier I'll show you one a small little trick it will make it uh, a piece of cake so let me copy this uh, one for your future reference. I'll copy the solution as well for you. And I'll copy it, I'll paste it here. I'll comment it out. Okay. And now let me get rid of this. So now I'll just get rid of all of it, right? So now, uh, what we will do is we will sort a string A in string B. Once it is sorted, then we will get the, it will make it much easier, right? So let's do that. Uh, so let's uh, sort string A, string A. Uh, but you uh, know that the sort function is only possible on arrays. It cannot be done in 
on the string directly so we need to convert uh, the string into an array but before doing that we need to uh, change this to lowercase lowercase and also we'll um, do the regular expression the same regular expression uh, that we did to get rid of the space and punctuations all right so once uh, we got rid of that i will call split function split function on it and then once uh, i have changed this uh, to uh, an array i can call the sort uh, method and once it is sorted i will join it back like this so let me return this to see what we get let me save this return as you can see uh, this is a uh, high there right so this is string a uh, so uh, we can do the same thing for string b so let's uh, create another function to do this uh, to make it easier because we know about the software development principle do not repeat yourself we do we will not repeat ourselves so therefore we'll create a function uh, i will call this function clean um, str and i'll provide this st string uh, as the parameter so what i will do is i'll just uh, cut this from here i'll paste it here return sorry return and instead of string string we need to use the same uh, input parameter name or the same thing like this okay so now we can do the same like we can return uh, clean str provide a string a and compare this to clean str string b so now when we do this uh, we'll just compare this well this is a conditional uh, statement um, if it is true it will return true if it is false it will return false so let's also try with another example this one uh copy paste save run it we are getting the correct output uh, this is uh, the second solution as i as i promised to give you we need to write a function that returns number of vowels used in a string what's a vowel uh, vowels are the characters a e i o u here are some examples uh, so we need to count the vowels um, i e e so there are three vowels we need to return three and second example how are you we have five vowels so we need to count the vowels uh, in a given string uh, pause the video give this problem a try all right so i'll give you two solutions uh, to this problem uh, i'll give you one solution with the regular expressions that is the easiest and um, a lot of interviewers might not like you to use the um, uh, the regular expressions they may not allow you to do that so i'm going to give you another uh, solution uh, just in case so with the regular expression is very easy um, so we have a built-in function called match which we can call on string which is the uh, provided string so we can call match and then we will provide a regular expression so what regular expression we will provide here we'll um, use a character set of a e i o u right and then we need to provide two flags g and i why are we providing g because uh, by default if we do not have g over here it will stop at the first match that it finds for example if it finds a so it will only uh, return the, the first match 
when we have G, it will not stop at the first match. It will go for, uh, forward and it will find any character that matches uh, the uh, letters in this uh, character set. And the I is for case insensitivity. Uh, so it will become insensitive to the case. Even if it is a capital letter, it will still work. So so uh, this one, the match, uh, method returns um, null if uh, there are no matches if uh, there are any match it will return an array with all the matches so uh, therefore what we will do is create a, a variable called matches and uh, and store the result of the matches inside this uh, matches variable and we'll return matches if there are matches we will return the length we don't want to return the match because as you can see in the examples we just need to return the count of those vowels so we'll just use a link because on arrays we can run we have a property uh, called length and it will return uh, the length of that array and if there are no matches we can re return zero so in that case uh, uh, I'll save this and I run it as you can see for coding money uh, the in the example we have this is returning the correct result so this was the first solution with the regular expression all right let's work on the second solution to this problem uh, so the idea is we'll create an array with all the vowels inside it so um, then we will check the strength against uh, the values in the array uh, to see if we can find a match if there is a match we will use the counter variable to increment and then at the end we'll return that uh, counter variable so uh, let's try to do that so let's create uh, an array called uh, um, uh, vowel check and so what I'm going to do, let's try to copy from here. So I'm just going to copy the vowels in this array. So now we have all the vowels, uh, right? Uh, whoops, sorry. I try to use the camel case. Uh, okay, so now I also need a variable called a count. And I'm going to set that to zero. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, run a loop for uh, let um, car of str. Okay, I'm going to have a logic inside of this loop. And at the end, I'll return the count. What I will do it, uh, inside of this loop, I will check to see if the characters in the string is a vowel. If it is a vowel, I'm going to increment the count variable. If it is not a vowel, I'll not do anything. And so at the end, we'll just return the count. Okay. Uh, so the loop goes uh, each character one by one like this, right? So in this example, we have coding money. It, um, the first uh, iteration, it will check for C, then uh, O, D, I, N, G. So uh, I'll say, um, uh, so the arrays have a built-in helper um, function called includes. Um, that's also available on this string, but in our case, it's better to use an array. It's more structured and organized. So we can say, um, if vowel check dot includes, okay, if the vowel check includes the character from the string, so if it includes character, so in the first iteration, C, if is a C inside of this array, if it is, uh, um, uh, uh, if it is not, then it will just uh, skip uh, this line. If in the second iteration, it will come to O. So it will 
uh, check to see if O is inside of the vowel check. If it is, then we will increment the count variable. So at the end, we will return the count. So let me run it. In the example, we should get the four. So let's see. As you can see, we're getting the correct result. This is another solution to this problem. Uh, one more thing before you go, uh, you can just add uh, two lowercase over here uh, to make sure even if the provided string has uh, capital letters or small letters, it will still match. Our JavaScript training algorithms for beginners would not be complete without the classic FizzBuzz challenge. We need to write a program that console logs the numbers from 1 to n, but for the multiples of 3, print fizz instead of the number, and for the multiples of 5, print buzz. For the numbers, which are multiples of both 3 and 5, print fizzbuzz. Here's an example. Uh, I would like you to try this problem and pause the video right here. Thank you for trying to solve this problem. I hope you were able to find a solution. If you did not, this doesn't matter. We'll work on it together. Uh, the whole trick to solving this problem is using the modulo operator. If you haven't used that before, we'll use it right away. Okay, of course we need a loop, right? So we'll start from one, I let, let i equals to one because it's given in the directions and the condition that we need to satisfy is i less than or equal to n and then i plus plus. Okay, so the first thing that we would need to do is to check for if the number is a multiple of five and three if it is uh, so how to check if a number is a multiple of uh, three we use the modulo operator so we can say i uh, the modulo operator is the person sign um, if i is um, if i modulo three equals to uh, zero it means that if the um, if i is divisible by 3 completely and it does not have any remainders then it means this number is a multiple of 3 okay and so i also need to check if i is um, a, a multiple of 5 if if i is divisible by 5 and it does not have any remainders then in that case we need to write phase bus right else if if i is a multiple of three and if i is divisible by three and it does not have any remainders after the division uh, then it, it means that this is also we use the modulo operator every time if we need to do like for example every third time or every second time in, in a repetition uh, so that's how like i'll show you uh, now in the example okay so in that case if it is um, multiple of three we need to print fizz so console.log fizz else if i is a multiple of five we need to write buzz console.log else console.log the number i okay let me save this and run the code. As you can see, I provided the number five here to the function. And as you can see that I have the number one, two, and then it says fizz, and then I have four, and then it says buzz. Okay, let me try with a bigger number like 20. Okay, let me save it and run the code. As you can see, so like i said if a number is a multiple of uh, three then it means then it means that it will repeat every third time you see this is the third you know every 
third time we have fizz, every fifth time we have buzz, and every time that the number is divisible by three and a five and there is no remainder to that number like for example 15 we write fizz buzz okay that's the solution to the classic fizz buzz challenge we need to write a function that accepts a positive number n the function should console log a step shape with n levels using the pound character make sure the step has spaces on the right hand side here are some examples the uh, function accepts n number and if we are provided with number two this should be the output okay so give this problem a try and uh, pause the video right here all right thank you for trying to solve this problem if you were able to find a solution that's great if not it doesn't matter we will work on this problem together i think first uh, we need to focus on printing something like this uh, it would be easier for us to print something like this and then we will worry about the spaces later let's do this one and then we'll take it from there uh, as you might have already guessed we need a loop so i'll write the for loop i uh, equals to one i less than or equal to n i plus plus okay so one thing um, i've noticed that beginners are confused about whether they should start from one or zero if they want to start from zero then i'll make sure that the condition is i less than n but if they want to start from one then the condition has to be i less than or equal to n so that's important to note uh, for now i'm just going to console log the pound sign i'm going to save it and uh, run it as you can see we get the uh, three uh, pounds uh, but we need nine uh, pound symbols three on each line okay so um, to do that uh, we would need to use a nested loop I noticed that the beginner developers find working with the um, uh, nested loops uh, difficult. Uh, they struggle with it. Uh, I'm going to give you a way uh, to make it easier. If you visualize uh, what you want to do in terms of uh, a table containing rows and columns, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, so let's uh, try to do that. Uh, I'm going to rename my variable i'll change it to row and then i will create a nested loop and i'll make this a column so the nested loop the outer loop will be responsible for uh, the row and the inner loop will be responsible for creating all the columns in that row. So if you think about it this way, then it would be much easier to work with the nested loops uh, from now on. Okay, so let's uh, console log here just to show you what you get as the output. As you can see, you're we're getting eight pound symbols in the output, uh, but we would we need only uh, three pounds on each line, so it's going to be a three by three uh, pound symbols, um, and we need that in the output. Okay, so how to do that? Okay, uh, so I want to create all the columns. I mean, I will. I want to create an empty variable called line i will set it to empty string and what i'm going to do i'm going to append append the pound symbol to this line so after it completes it adds the pound symbol for all of the columns for that row i want to 
uh, console log that line okay let me save this and run as you can see we're getting the desired output right all right so the best way to visualize the code that i've written here so far uh, by debugging it so let me run the debugger I have set a breakpoint on the first loop. Let me uh, let me watch for some variables. Let me watch for row and call and line. Okay, and let's run this. Okay, so the outer loop starts at one, and then we initialize the variable line to empty uh, string and then it uh, executes the inner loop it starts the inner loop at uh, one column one and then it appends the uh, the pound symbol to the line variable uh, then it will increment uh, the column to two and then uh, it will append another pound as you can see and then it increments to column three and since we are provided with a number n you see n is three so now we know that the uh, inner loop will break uh, and so the row will increment now we will working on the second row and then again we initialize the line to an empty string and then the inner loop will run three times to append three pound to the line and then we'll uh, console log the second line. Now we're working with the third line in the loop um, and it initialize the line and then we're appending the pound sign to, to the line and then once row is equal to four, um, it um, the condition becomes false, so it uh, you know exits the loop. So this is uh, the code. When you have trouble understanding the code, it's always a good idea to debug it. Okay, so now we we have we know what this is doing. Now we need to take care of the spaces on the right side. Uh, we need to do what let's let me illustrate that what we need to do here so we need to remove uh, replace the um, for the first line uh, we need to have two spaces on the second line we need to have one space uh, now we need to work on getting an output uh, uh, like this um, it will be easier for me to explain this uh, on the blackboard uh, so let's get on the blackboard all right so whenever we're working with the nested loops it's always best to visualize it in terms of a table in rows and columns it makes it much easier to work with the problem so let's see on which columns do we have the pound symbol right we need to figure that out we have a here column one row one we have it column one uh, row two um, as you can see this is one is equal to one um, column one one is less than two let's see here uh column uh two um uh, row two you we know that two is equal to two right and let's see this one this column three row three we can see that three is equal to three um just by looking at this we know that all the columns that have the pound symbol satisfy this condition. Column is either less 
are equal to the row. All right, since we figured out the condition logic, the code is easy. Uh, so here we'll say if column is less than or equal to row, then append this line, append pound to the line, else append space. Let's save it and run the code. As you can see, we're getting the res desired output. This is the solution to the problem. Let's try with another number, like, let's try with six. Oops. As you can see, we're getting the correct uh, string pattern. We need to write a function that accepts a positive number n. The function should console log a pyramid shape with n levels using the pound character. Make sure the pyramid has spaces on both the left and the right hand side. Here are some of the examples. As you, as you can see that it has spaces on the right and left hand side of the pound symbol whenever there's needed. Okay, so I would like you to give this problem a try. Pause the video right here. As you might have probably guessed, we need a loop, right? We, as you can see, if the number that's provided is three, we need three rows, right? So we need to, um, uh, write a loop um, like I mentioned in the video uh, before this one uh, that whenever you're working with uh, nested loops it's best to visualize them in the form of a table consisting of rows and columns it makes the problem so much easy uh, so let me write uh, the for loop let row equals to zero um, row less than n um, row plus plus that's easy right so we need three rows and for each line you see this is one uh, line uh, I'm calling each row a line right so I'm going to need an empty string so I'm gonna uh, um, create a variable called line and I'm gonna set it to uh, an empty uh, string now we need uh, to loop over the columns let the column equal to zero and uh, column uh, less than okay so we need to figure out the number of columns because it's uh, as you can see for uh, if the number is three we need five columns so uh, let's hop on to the blackboard real quick okay so what do we need to figure out is the number of columns because number of rows is clear for if n is equal to 2, we have 2 rows. If n is equal to 3, we have 3 rows, right? But uh, the number of columns, if it is 2n minus 1, does this satisfy the number of columns? So if the number is 3, uh, 2 multiplied by 3 is 6, minus 1 is equal to 5. So this satisfies the number of columns. So now we can easily write our inner loop. And we can write it like, um, let me select the same color, for let column equals to zero, column is less than 2n minus 1, column plus plus, right? So now we need to figure out which columns do we need to put the pound symbol in, right? So if you look at it, uh, we know that the middle column always has the pound symbol. So let's figure out the formula to find the middle column. So if we have five columns and we divide it divide that by 2 we get 2.5 and if we round down this number we get 2 
right? And you can see that the two column has, all of it has the pound symbol, okay? Uh, we have a method called math.floor. And to get the number of columns, we already know that it is 2n minus 1. And we divide that by 2, we get uh, the midpoint. We figured out the midpoint. Now we know that there's a few of the pound sign on the right side of the midpoint, and there are a few of the pound sign on the left side of the midpoint. So if you see this uh, carefully and you observe it, you will figure out that uh, all the columns that have the pound symbol satisfy this condition. And the condition is column is either greater than or equal to mid minus row and column is less than or equal to mid plus row. Okay, so now that we have figured that out, it is so much easy to write the code. So let's uh, hop on the Visual Studio code and write the code for this one. All right, so as I've explained to you on the Blackboard, we now know uh, the number of uh, columns. That is 2n minus 1, and then we get uh, column plus plus. All right. and we also know the condition uh, to use uh, for uh, you know determining which column should have the pound symbol and that is if right if a column is greater than or equal to a mid uh, midpoint minus row and column is less than midpoint, uh, less than or equal to midpoint plus row, all right? So we need to, uh, we don't have a variable mid, uh, we need to create that here. I'm gonna, Use the mad.floor and 2n minus 1 divided by 2. All right? Okay. And now, uh, if um, this condition is satisfied, we know that we need to append the pound symbol. If not, we need to append space, okay? And right after this inner loop ends, uh, we need to console log uh, the line. Let me save this and run it. Cannot mix big int and other types use explicit conversion. So I'm getting an error. Let's see what error is this. I know what the problem is. We need to multiply two multiply by n minus one. And that's the same thing we need to do over here. We need to multiply this uh, like this two multiply by n minus one, right? So let me save this and run this again. As you can see, I'm getting the correct output this time. Um, and let me try with another. Let's try with nine. Let me save it and run it. As you can see, we're getting a bigger pyramid this time and this code is working perfectly. I've had dreams that weren't just dreams. Today we need to write a function that accepts an integer n and returns that 
n by n spiral matrix. Here are some examples. If we are provided with an input number 3, we need to return a two-dimensional array with the values uh, in the same order as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'd like you to give this problem a try and pause the video right here. This is not an easy problem. I would say this is a medium to a hard problem. Uh, if you were not able to find a solution to this problem, that is very normal. I was struggling with this problem the first time I tried it. Uh, but once you get the trick, uh, problems like this become so much easy. Um, okay, so as you can see, we uh, need to define a few variables like start row, end row, start column, end column, and we would need a counter variable. And um, also, we would need to take care of the four side, uh, the top row. We would need one loop for the top row, uh, another loop for the right column, another loop for the bottom row, and another loop for the left uh, column. Once we so we, we, we would need at least four loops. And once we take care of the outer, uh, you know, the four sides, outer sides, uh, we would need to put the four loops inside a while loop to take care of all the inner uh, four sides of the matrix, right? So our first loop would go from start column to end column and this would take care of the top row right and once we do this we would increment the start row by one so it will move down here um, and then we would need another loop that would go from start row to end row and that would take care of the uh, right side uh, the right column right and once we do this we decrement the end column so we decrement the end column it will come over here and then we need another loop that would go from end column to start column and it would take care of the bottom uh, row. And once the bottom row is complete, we would decrement the end row. So it will come over here. And then we would uh, finally run a loop from end row to start row that would take care of the left side, uh, the left column of uh, the matrix. And then once we write this, these four loops, we need to put them inside the while loop. And the while loop would take care of the inner four sides. So once you know this, the coding becomes so much easy. So let's start coding. I'll start off by creating a variable called result. I'll set that to empty array. And we need to return a uh, multidimensional array. So uh, to create that, we need to run a for loop for i equals to zero i less than n i plus plus result dot push empty array return result let me run this code to see yes we're getting four empty arrays inside of this array because the number that is provided as the input is four okay so we need to have four rows in the matrix 
we uh, but these are empty we need to fill them with values and once we're done at the end we'll return the result okay and so we need to take care of the four sides top right bottom left top right bottom left okay um, to create this top row we need to run a loop uh, from uh, but first we need to create some uh, variables the variables that we need to define are counter I'll set that to one start row I'll set that to zero and row n minus one start call equals to zero and call is n minus one okay so for the top row we need to start for let i equals to start call i less than or equal to end call i plus plus make sure you have semicolons here and result okay so the first value that you'll provide will be for the row and the second values are going to be for the column okay since uh, the, the the values for the columns are going to be dynamic and it will be coming from i but we know that the top row is start row so i'll do start row equal to the counter and then i will increment the counter like this let me save this and run it okay as you can see the top row is done so we need to increment the start row okay like it comes here okay let's do this the same thing for the right side this time it will be start row because it's going to be vertical it comes from the top uh, to uh, the bottom row so it will be uh, start row uh, end row i plus plus this time the value for the row will be dynamic but we know that the column that needs the values changed are going to be the end column we are going to be adding the values to the end column so and at the end once this end column is done we will uh, decrement the end column so it's going to be end call minus minus i'll save it i'll run it as you can see the top row and the right column is done let's take care of the bottom row so for the bottom row well, let me copy this one so for the bottom row as you know that we will start from the end row uh, end column and i is greater than or equal to greater than or equal to the start column and we need to decrement the value of i the values of the column is going to be dynamic but we know that since it's going to be the bottom row so it is going to be the end row and once that is done 
uh, we will decrement the end row like that okay let me run this to see it's working fine so the top right side and the bottom uh, row is done so we need to take care of the left side so for this one for this one we knew that it's going to go from end row end row it's uh, start row uh, we know that the values for the rows is going to be dynamic but the values for uh, the column is going to be start call and once that is done we will increment the start column like this so let's run this one okay so the four sides are done one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve right so we need to put these four loops inside of a while loop to take care of all the inner uh, four sides of the matrix so let me copy the four loops that we wrote over here i'm going to cut it and here i'm going to write a while loop while start row is less than or equal to end row and start column is less than or equal to end column while this condition is true you know execute this code within the body of the while loop which are the four loops it will keep on looping until it reaches the end of the row and end of the column so let me save this and run the code as you can see we are getting the desired output and it's going into the right direction one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen let's try with another number like six and run the code we are getting the bigger matrix with the correct values now you're ready to start my lead code video series you should find links somewhere on the screen to the playlist